This video is a follow-up on the weak acid strong base titration video and it's a it's a summary that goes over all the different titrations you might see on the AP exam. So namely the a strong acid strong base is the first one we'll be looking at. Uh, and we're going to go over the different areas during the titration. Like there's there's basically four key spots that you need to know about. Uh, you'll you'll need to know what species, what chemical species are present at each of these four spots. Uh, and you'll need to know how to do the corresponding math that goes with those four key spots. Um, like usual, we'll have to go over uh, some practice problems after we do this and make sure we can uh, apply the things that we go over in the video. Okay, so let's get started. Um, well, actually, I just wanted to preface it one more time. But, so we're, we're doing a strong acid, strong base, okay? Then a weak acid, strong base. Um, and then if you flip the paper over that you got uh, that you got in class, it's a weak base titrated with a strong acid. So those are the three you'll need to, that you'll need to know about. Um, and then we'll answer some questions at the end. All right, so let's get started. Um, and then fill in like these boxes as I go along um, on your handout as well. So uh, point number one, the first titration we're doing is strong acid, strong base. So in, in this titration you have uh, strong acid such as like HCl and a strong base. Now the AP exam, uh, we don't write the spectator ions. As you know, these are really just charge holders, the uh, Cl- and the Na+. So really your reaction is strong acid and strong base. And there's uh, just water that's forming in the reaction. Uh, so you'll see that there's no, um, since it's not done with a weak acid or a weak base, uh, you don't develop a conjugate system where you have a, where you end up having a buffer. So there's, there's no special, uh, there's nothing really special going on with, um, with this, this zone right here. In fact, uh, this is not really shouldn't be really referred to as the buffer region because no buffer is by definition no buffer is created so at point number one this is where um so you have your beaker and your you have your uh you have your burette so you have your titrant and your titrate or your analyte analyte it's called um and you have your strong acid in here and you have your strong base in here and you're going to turn the switch on uh, but nothing's added yet so at point zero okay milliliters of titrant so when zero is added um, the only thing present really is just the H plus uh, so you calculate that pH by just taking the negative log of whatever your H plus concentration is and that gives you the pH um, now point two uh, you're going to have, so it's a species and ions present. So I'm going to write before by writing a B here, and then I'm going to write after. So for all of these, for points two, three, and four, so before and after. So before you had H plus, um, and so before the, before meaning before the reaction, you have H plus and OH minus. Okay, then after the reaction, you're going to have, uh, so after you do your earth table, this is after your earth table, um, you're, you're going to have excess H+. Plus. Okay, so all of the OH would have been consumed. So you get your leftover, you get your leftover H+, plus, um, and then you take the negative log of whatever that ans whatever that is. So take negative log of your H plus, and that gives you your pH. Um, notice that you're gonna have a you can have a volume change. So I'll maybe use a different color pen to indicate that. So note that you will have um, have to remember that there's a volume change. And that, so the volumes are gonna be additive. So as this is being added, so you're gonna have a, a new volume, a new total volume. Um, so that, that goes for all of these um, in all of our examples. So we're gonna go, go over three titrations total doing this analysis. 
um, just know that uh, you're going to have a new volume in 2, 3, and 4 that you're going to have to account for. So remember these brackets are moles over your total volume of solution. Okay, so on to uh, point three. Now all of the or about point two, one more thing about point two, all of these points here are done exactly the same. You're gonna have excess H plus after you run it through the earth table. Um, then you get your total volume. Um, calculate your concentration and then take negative log of that number. Okay, so stoichiometric point, this is when you have you're gonna have um, equal moles as you do base, um, and you could substitute if you have your if you know the molarity um, of base. You could go mol molarity of base times the volume of base since the molarity equals moles over volume. If you solve for moles here, if you solve for moles here, then you have n equals m times v. So you can substitute if needed. Um, and we'll see more plenty of examples of this when we start doing some practice problems. Um, so if you substitute for your moles of base and moles of acid, you'll have, and uh, be very careful to label it with subscripts like B and A. So MA times VA and substitute that in for moles of acid. Okay, so at the stoichiometric point, um, your amount of H plus will equal your amount of OH. Your moles are going to be equal. So after your earth table, so that's uh, that's before, then after your earth table, like on the F line, you have zero H plus and you have zero OH minus. So all, you, all you're gonna have is water at the stoichiometric point. And this is unique only for this titration, for the strong acid, strong base titration. Note that in the next two, you're going to have the conjugate, 100% of the conjugate of what you started with. Um, but in this case, it's strong and strong. They eat each other up, and you're going to just have water. So calculate the pH by. You don't. The solution is neutral. If I could spell neutral. The solution is neutral. So why is the pH 7? Well, for the reasons we just described, H plus is equal to OH minus, and they both are fully consumed, and you only have water. So there's actually nothing really to calculate if you're asked to calculate the pH of the equivalence point of strong acid, strong base titration. So you only have water at the stoichiometric point. So the excess point is, so before you had H plus and your OH minus, then after your earth table, you only have OH minus because it's in excess. Calculate the pH by, you get your POH, then subtract from 14. I mean, there's several ways to do it. This is the most common that students do, and this is the one I do in videos. So subtract from 14. Subtract from 14. All right, and as I pointed out earlier, um, you're going to want to be careful to add up the total volumes when you get to the excess point. All right, so on to weak acid and strong base. So... Let's start this one. Um, at point one, no base is added yet. So this would be like if you had HA uh, plus OH minus, where HA is like acetic acid or hydrofluoric acid, some other weak acid. Okay. And then um, notice you're going to be making the conjugate and water in, uh, in this reaction. So if no base is added yet, the only thing you have there is going to be HA. So it's HA only, and we're going to run that through an ice table. It's going to be kind of like a like the first style of equilibrium problems we did. So use your um, HA initial, um, and uh, you'll need the KA, and you do an ice table and you figure out your H plus the amount that dissociates. All right, so 
the buffer region can be done by using the Henderson Hasselbach equation. Um, and uh, I'm going to describe specifically the halfway point. So um, at the halfway point, it's your amount of strong base is equal to half the amount of weak acid. So on your, um, on your earth table, it's when you have this situation. Let's say you have uh, 10 millimoles of weak acid and it's when you add five millimoles of the strong base then what happens is i'm going to erase this because i need this uh, space here uh, so what happens here is uh, five of it will react and you'll have five millimole left over um, all of this reacts so that'll be zero um, and then you actually create five of the conjugate so you're going to have equal parts of the conjugate so you have five millimole of the weak acid and five millimole of its conjugate um so that's when that's exactly what this bullet point is saying so you have five and five so those moles are going to be equal and then if you run it through the henderson hasselbach equation you'll have this where you have base over acid and the ratio here is one and the log of one is zero so this whole term cancels out and you get this Okay, so that's what happens at the halfway point. For all other buffer regions, you will have some varying ratio of base to acid. So this will not be one at the other buffer regions. Okay, the, uh, this ratio right here. So you figure out these numbers by running it through the earth table. So initially, or before the reaction, you're gonna have HA and you'll have OH minus. Then after the reaction, you're going to have HA, the OH, as we saw right here, is consumed. So you're going to have HA and its conjugate. Um, and then you use, I'm going to call it the HH equation here. So you'll need the, uh, you'll need the pKa of the weak acid um, and the mole amounts after you run it through the earth table. So stoichiometric point is when um, you have strong base and it equals the amount of weak acid. So that's when um, you up this number, instead of five right here, that's when you have, uh, that's when you have 10. So when these two, uh, when these two are equal in moles, that's your stoichiometric point, okay? So this will actually be 10 of it will react. This would be zero, this would be zero. And then this would actually be 10 at this point. So you'll have all of the conjugates. So before the reaction, you had HA and OH minus. Then after the reaction, um, you have A minus only. So that's what's special about this point. So you're gonna calculate the pH by, you do an earth table and this gets your moles of conjugate okay next you're gonna need the total volume then realize that you have the conjugate base of the weak acid so you're gonna have to turn the ka into the kb and use an ice table and Another kind of a little bit confusing thing is you're going to be calculating um, OH from your ice table. So you're going to have to go from OH and turn that into H. And there's a couple ways to do that. You can use KW or take negative log, subtract from 14. So why is the pH, if we look here, why is the pH greater than 7? So the pH is greater than 7 because... The pH is greater than seven because of this. You have A minus only. So only A minus the conjugate base is present. Okay, so on the excess points, here's where I have my little scratch work ice table here, or uh, earth table, I mean. Okay, 
and here's where um let's say you had 10 so this this amount's not going to change right because that was what was in the beaker and then uh but the amount that's being delivered the titrant here is going to be what's changing so let's say that's 10 let's say this is 15 okay so now this time this is the limiting reactant that goes to zero and you're gonna have excess OH, so you have five millimoles of OH. So before the reaction, you had HA and um, OH minus. Okay, after the reaction though, um, you're gonna have OH minus and you'll have 10 millimoles of the conjugate base. So you'll also have the conjugate base, but as we saw with the buffer problems earlier, um, you're going to ignore, since you have two bases, this is a strong base, this is a weak base, you want to ignore the A minus. Okay, it's, it's not going to make a significant contribution of OH minus. So, as you know, you know, you'll flip the KB and then you can see how much, but it won't, why do any of that? It's not going to add to uh, the amount of strong base OH that you have. It'll, it'll be uh, insignificant. So, you calculate the, the pH by um getting your OH concentration so get the OH concentration by getting by the amount of moles of OH from the earth table and divide by V total okay take negative log Okay, take negative log of your OH and subtract from 14. Subtract from 14. That gives you your uh, that gives you your pH of the excess point. Okay, moving on. We're on the weak base titrated with a strong acid. So since this one is a, uh, it's really similar. I'm gonna kind of go a little bit faster on this one. So at at the first point here, again, we have our uh, our picture here, and we have our um, our analyte, and this time we have a base, and we're going to be adding acid. So I'll leave my reaction up here. I have base plus strong acid, and you're going to be making a BH plus, which is the conjugate acid. And this is our weak base. And this is our strong acid. Okay, so when nothing is added yet, all we have is B, our base. So you just use the ice table and KB. And you use your initial concentration of base. Okay, now at the halfway point, it's exactly like the weak acid strong base titration. So um, that is, if you have like 10 of this, 5 of this, um, five, half of that will react. This will be consumed. This was 0. Now it's 5. Now you see that you have equal amounts. So that's what this means. It's when you have, um, when your strong acid is half the moles, so it's 5 and this was 10. That's what this is saying. When it's half the moles of what weak base, what the amount of weak base you had. Okay, so, and then like like the previous titration in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, it reduces to this right here. Okay, for other buffer points, um, also, you know what else is true is actually the POH is actually equal to the PKB. And you can use a converted form of the Henderson-Hasselbalch um, for, this, for this titration. So for... I'll go over that method in class. I think to simplify um, this video, we'll just stick with the pKa. So the species present before would be your base and your uh, strong acid. After, your strong acid will be consumed, as we saw here. Um, you'll have the conjugate acid and some leftover base. Okay, so since you have a buffer, you just use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Okay, um, now at the stoichiometric point, 
same as before it's when these two are equal so instead of five here this this is actually 10 okay and the amount of this reacted so it would be 10 this would be 0 10 this would be 0 and so the only thing present after the reaction is actually the conjugate acid so before the reaction we had our base strong acid after the reaction we have our conjugate acid only okay and so here we calculate the uh, concentration so we we need to get the uh, the moles of our conjugate acid from the earth table okay we need remember to get the V total um, and then run it through an ice table and don't forget to convert your KB of your base convert that to KA because your ice table will be for a weak acid dissociation so why is the pH less than 7 so if we look here where this star is it's less than 7 well it's because you have the conjugate acid only and that's what the only thing is there so they try to ask that on the AP exam they'll say like oh it's because they'll try to confuse you on a multiple choice they'll say oh it's because you added a strong acid well no that's not why yes you did add a strong acid but that's not the correct answer uh, the correct answer is the conjugate acid is what's produced in the reaction that's the only thing present so eh plus which is the conjugate acid is the only thing there okay and then it's going to do it's going to do what acids do they donate to water and make h Rio. Okay, at the excess point, initially you're going to have your base and your acid. Then after, you're going to have um, you're going to have the conjugate acid and you're going to have excess strong acid. So this one remember is weak, and this one remember this is strong. So you can effectively ignore this guy. So you're going to get your moles of excess, H plus excess. Usually it'll be in millimoles. Get your moles of H plus excess from the earth table. Don't forget the V total. Then pH that guy. Negative log of that guy of the negative log of the H plus. All right, so um, now you'll see at the end of this, I have a few thought questions here. So see if you can answer the questions here um, as part of the your turn. Um, and also see if you can apply, now these are, these are gonna be challenging. You're gonna have to study this worksheet and um, look at what we, the summary that we did in all these boxes. Um, and uh, don't forget these substitutions that we did here. So we use this substitution here. This is a key thing that you could use in problem solving. Okay, so see if you can answer these thought questions at the end here. And also I have some your turn questions here. to answer. So let me uh, zoom in on this. Okay, so here's question one. Calculate the pH at the halfway point and the equivalence point for each of the following titrations. So um, there's A, B, and C to try here. So I'll leave that here for a second for you to, um, to write these problems down, or you could pause it. Um, and then question two. So here's a, another one that's that's pretty similar. Okay, so use the equations, use the boxes. These are the key boxes that we went over. So this is this is referring to um, let me see. 
So this would be at the equivalence point. So that would be box th uh, three that I was labeling three here. And this is a weak acid plus strong base titration. Um, equivalence point. Um, and then here, it says to calculate um, this should actually be 50 and, and 0.5 molar and here you have 50 and 1 molar so you should go hmm it's half as concentrated as the weak base but so what point am I at so which box am I at from that worksheet okay and then at the stoichiometric point in question two uh, this was this one actually so this is a weak base and a strong acid titration. All right, so I'll see what you guys come up with on that. And that's the end of our video.